Good evening and welcome to tonight's special broadcast because it's a very special time of the year, especially for those of us who acknowledge the significance of this moment. It's the recognition of Passover. Some refer to it as Easter, but it centers in the resurrection of our Lord. That is the most powerful moment in all of human history. Everything that happened prior to that moment, everything that led Jesus to the cross to literally nail all the judgments that were against humanity to the cross once and for all, and within his own body to take all humanity within himself behind the veil to the throne that one day we all may awaken to the realization that we are still in our Father, we are still fully loved by our Father, and truly we are sons of God. Well, tonight's theme is, The Heavens Declare, Behold the Lamb. So worship together as I share this song, Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb Slain from the foundation of the world For sinners crucified O holy sacrifice Behold the Lamb of God comes tonight shall we just join together in prayer and just invite the presence of the Holy Spirit just to engage our hearts and minds together in this very unique moment that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead the same Spirit that dwells in us that will quicken our mortal bodies may quicken our minds and our hearts to receive the Word and may it bring forth the word of faith, the word of life, resurrection life in his name, that you and I may celebrate together joyfully the hope set before us that we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. Let's pray. Father, may the anointing quicken our hearts, awaken in us the truth of life, that we have been grafted together, Jew and Gentile, in one body on the tree, now taken behind the veil, taken into a glorious place where we are seated together in Christ, 
May our minds continue to be renewed and transformed until that living reality in the throne of God, in the heart of our Father, Hallelujah. be our active presence forever Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So glad you are with us tonight. Thank you again for joining and taking this moment as we exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The heavens do declare, behold the Lamb. I do pray tonight we receive by the Spirit Spirit, a fresh revelation of the Lamb of God, that we would receive a fresh understanding, light, of our purpose that is incorporated with His glorious plan of the ages. And I pray that we experience and feel and sense in our own heart the cleansing power and love of the life of the Lamb of God. Truly, the Lamb entered into, behind the veil, into the most holy place. And that most holy place is where we come right now to the throne of grace and find help in time of need. Our Lamb is the Jehovah Jireh who provides, who sees. He sees before it even became a need. Tonight, may you and I encounter the Lamb of God who has made a fresh and living way. Hallelujah. That would be a living opening into the most holy place, into the realm of glory, of life, and of light. We all need to, in this hour, like never before, experience truly the life of the Lamb, a life on another dimension. Hallelujah. Well, before I get into the message, I just want you to be aware that every Sunday night, we have a program it's called spiritual keys it's at eight o'clock eastern standard time we love that you join us and we thank you for your comments and your participation there and also you may or may not know we're excited we're going to have a three-day conference april 21 22 and 23 facebook only there is a god in heaven who reveals mysteries and I just want to thank you you're listening now because you have a heart to tap into and encounter the truer things the newer things that God wants to reveal in this season and in this time so put that on your calendars and uh, share it with a friend who you think might be blessed by this ministry of life of glorious restoration that is our heart well the message tonight is taken from and the message that we began January 1st 2021 is taken from Psalms 19 verse 1 it's to the chief musician it's a psalm of David Psalms 19 a psalm of David David, as you know, was a man after God's own heart. And he wrote from the heart. He wrote because he was a seer, a psalmist of Israel. And what he says is the heavens declare the glory of God. We define the heavens as a people of the spirit. And the firmament or the expanse shows or declares or demonstrates his handiwork. And yes, you are the handiwork of God. You are his workmanship created in Christ, in glory, in the realm of the eternal. You were created in Christ. You were foreordained from the foundation of the world certain particular works that you would bring forth and manifest in this hour. So the heavens declare a story. They prophesy, they're describing, they're narrating, and the heavens 
contain a revelation from God truly that have set forth his purposes. You know, he established the end before he even began. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The heavens are decreeing and declaring, and it's declaring a divine journey, our divine journey in, into union and into harmony and into the presence of the Lord. Truly, we are on a journey into the light of life. And did you know, I believe that um, this heavens, part of it, well, it started with a song. <laughs> That's from Job 20, uh, Job 38, verse 7. It said that the morning stars sang together. Hallelujah. And did you know that there is also a song of the Lamb? Hallelujah. And the redeemed of the Lord learned that song. Don't you want a fresh impartation of the song of the Lamb? That means you got more joy. That means you got more lift. You got more light. You got more direction. Hallelujah. And his song is in a glorious, positive, uplifting song. Glory. And he wants to turn all of your sad days into a song of life. Hallelujah. It's a season that we do have a new song. Glory. Well, Job chapter 38, verse 22. This is the oldest book of the Bible. And this is one of the earliest revelations to us from our Creator. Job 30. A2. And may we hear what the Spirit would like to speak to our heart tonight. Can you bring forth Maseroth in his season? Wow. Do we even know what season it is? May we truly be like the tribe of Issachar who knew the times and the seasons who, and who understood, who had the light of the Lamb, who understood what Israel ought to do. Well, the Maseroth they are the 12 signs of the zodiac. They are the constellations. And the Maseroth that Job got a revelation of, they mark the path of the sun in the heavens. Hallelujah. This is very key. Well, you see there the zodiac, the Maseroth, to the right. And the first sign in the zodiac is Aries. That is the lamb. We're going to look at that further. So the zodiac, hear me clearly, is a part of the old creation. Okay? You are a new creation, a new heaven, and a new earth. <laughs> and if you want to know what star you've been born under, what star, if you've been born again, you've been born again of an incorruptible seed, the morning star or the day star is the star of our heavenly realm. Hallelujah. And see, heaven is entered by birth. You have been born again into a living hope by an incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. Glory. So that we see here was a revelation, Job 38, 32. Can you bring forth Maseroth? And truly, God wants to bring forth the Christ within you. Glory. So, the first sign in the zodiac is Aries. And it means a new beginning. And truly, God wants to bring all of us a new beginning as we encounter afresh the life of the Lamb. Aries. The Hebrew name is Talat. Listen to this, meaning the Lamb sent forth. Glory. He was truly sent forth on a mission, with a mission, and he accomplishes. In the Latin, Aries means the Lamb, the chief, and the head. Who's the chief shepherd? Who's the head of the church? In Arabic, it means a sheep gentle and that is part of the lamb 
humble, gentle, merciful. So we see here Aries represents or pictures or portrays the lamb who is sacrificed yet reigning. You might want to just shout hallelujah right now. This is still the Hebrew calendar month of Nisan, which means a new beginning. And truly, I pray we get a new beginning in our relationship with the lover of our souls. He does want to make all things new. He wants to bring a freshness where there's been maybe a staleness. He wants to bring a refreshing wind and rain to your heart that will wash away the past and bring in what will last. Well, John the Baptist got a revelation of this lamb in John 1 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and says, behold, get a revelation. Behold, the lamb of God who, what does he do? He takes away the sin of the world. Glory. He removes our sin as far as the east is from the west, meaning he wants to let us know he lift, lifts up and off and away any of the mistaken identity because of the life of the lamb. It's a figure of speech where he wants to have an experiential reality of the breaking of sin's grip on humanity. We need to behold the Lamb who truly takes away the sin of the world. Glory, do we believe the power of the life of the Lamb? You know, it says in Isaiah 53, we all like sheep have gone astray. We've wandered off into error and to falsehood, but he laid on him the iniquity of us all. We have a high priest who is interceding for us. He's our high priest. He's our head shepherd, and he is making intercession for us so that we would awaken to the Christ in us, the hope of glory. See, he is the shepherd of our soul. In 1 Peter 2.25, it says, As ye were sheep going astray, but now you are returned, hallelujah, unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. He is the overseer of your soul. It's a season truly to return. And you know what? You can't return somewhere you haven't already been. You were created in Christ, hallelujah. We are returning to that place of grace, of that unlimited realm as we awake up, awaken because of the shepherd of our souls who leads us and who restores our soul. That is good news tonight. Glory, good news. We need to truly behold the Lamb of God. Behold Behold him afresh. Ask him for fresh revelation, not only on your eyes, but on the heart, on the eyes of our heart, so that we would behold the Lamb in fresh dimensions. Amen? Well, Peter told us in 1 Peter 1.18, as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your father. But with, verse 19, the precious blood of the lamb without blemish and without spot. You have been redeemed by the precious, valuable blood of the lamb. Redemption is part of creation. Redemption was prepared in fullness before God even said, let there be light. Hallelujah. The lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And there's two things, two functions of blood. One is it takes away the negative, the Adamic nature, the old creation. That's why Passover is so important. It purges us from the old. Hallelujah. 
I want to be purged from everything that is not like Christ, not like the anointing. Amen. God loves us enough to change us. We are to be changed from glory to glory. So the second function of the blood is it adds or it supplies the positive, powerful element of Christ, the new creation, which is heavenly, which is spiritual. So we increase from glory to glory. Aren't you glad you have been injected by the power of the life of the Lamb, the power of the blood of Jesus? Truly, God loved us. He washed us from our sins. It's like taking a big bath in the life of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. He wants to wash you and I tonight, mentally, emotionally. He wants to cleanse us brand new. If you will invite him to do that, see, it's by his stripes we are healed. It's in his wounds we encounter and experience a union with him. Glory. May that red blood cells, the white blood cells, just increase with the power of the Lord. I believe truly that there is a healing balm, a healing power because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The white blood cells, they kill germs that invade the body. You might just want to thank him for the power of his life in your life. You don't have to fear anything. It says if you be in Christ, if you be in love, you can cast out fear and allow love to come. White blood cells kill germs that invade the body, but red blood cells, they supply and they nourish the whole body. I pray tonight as we fellowship the Holy Spirit, we would be nourished, refreshed, we would be fed, hallelujah, meat from the life of the Lamb, glory. He was the Lamb more ordained for you, hallelujah, from the foundation of the world, and He wants to be manifested within our lives. Why? So we experience life on another level. We don't have to live in the regrets of the past, but we can truly walk in the light, that's the Lamb, as He is in the light, and have a fellowship, hallelujah, with the blood that washes away all sin. It takes guilt away. It takes regrets away. Let the blood, let the life of the Lamb flow. Amen? Glory, glory. Well, Ephesians gives us just another picture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, now hear this also in the Spirit, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit later. Husbands, this is the realm of the Spirit. Spirit, husband, soul, wife, body, children, Hallelujah. We'll kind of touch this a little bit later. But husbands or spirit, love your wives. Love the soul, the mind, the emotions, the will. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? Verse 26. That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. It's powerful and it's needful for us to be washed in the word gallons upon gallons daily how much water do you use to wash your face every day how much water of the word do we need bathing our souls our minds our emotions so we get identified with truth john 17 17 says sanctify them through thy truth your word is truth God, I believe, wants us to have a relationship on another level with the Word, which is spirit, which is life, which brings peace. Glory. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself. Listen to this. There's a purpose for washing in the Word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having 
spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Glory. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. God is wanting to get every blemish out of our beings. In one version it says, He will take away all the wrinkles and He wants a body without chips and without knots. <laughs> Anybody ever had a chip on their shoulder? Well, I've had a few chips on my shoulder. <laughs> Meaning you might feel you've been treated unfairly. You might have a negative attitude. That's a chip on your shoulder. God is wanting no offenses within our heart. Why? Great peace and have they who love thy law and nothing offends them. No chip on your shoulder. Say, saturate me in the word in life. And anybody uh, feel like you have a knot? I've had knots in my stomach, meaning I feel tense or afraid or anxious. God is wanting a glorious church without knots or chips, meaning he doesn't want you to be anxious. It, the word says, be anxious for nothing, but everything with prayer, communion with God. Let your request be made known to him. He cares for you. See, God loves you. He gave his son for you. He's prepared and foreordained your script. It's written within your heart, your pathway. And your pathway, it is good, it's glorious, it's victorious. God's got your back. God's got your life. God's got the whole world in the palm of his hand. Amen? Continuing on, so this is verse 28. You might want to allow this scripture verse to saturate you. So men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loves himself. Verse 29, no man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherishes it. He pays attention to it. Even as the Lord, the church. God loves the church. He is calling us to awake and arise to our purpose and glorious destiny. Verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Wow, we are in union with Christ. And what is so powerful, verse 31, for this cause... Or for this reason, a man will leave father, mother, leave the past, and be joined to his wife. And they too will be one flesh. This is a great mystery. Have we got a hold of, really, of the mystery? But I speak concerning Christ and the church, the mystery is a union that God wants us to really be indoctrinated in. Why? It's for our good. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. You might want to pray with me. Unveil to me the mysteries. I want to understand your purpose. Don't you want to be on God's program for the ages? He's got planned restoration for you and I. Hallelujah. I just want to lift up my hands and thank him. You might want to thank him with me. Thank him for a restoration in your own heart and mind, your purpose, your destiny. Hallelujah. Rejoice like what happened in the next scripture I'm going to read. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice. This struck me quite funny. And give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come. And the wife has made herself ready. Give honor to the lamb. Respect. Worship the lamb. Because the bride finally woke up. Hallelujah. She was clothed in the righteousness. Like Ruth, who was the bride to Boaz and was in the lineage of Messiah, 
You might want to look at this or even go to my book in Ruth. I wrote a book on Ruth, A Romance with Destiny, a powerful love story of redemption. And Ruth was given instructions. In Body of Christ, we need to follow Father's instructions. She was instructed to wash, get washed in the Word, get anointed with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Put on Christ, this is in Ruth 3, 3, and get to the threshing floor. Get to where he is. He is in glory. He's in light. He's in life. And that is actually where your heart is crying to enter into more fully. Why? That's the place to be. And it's interesting, in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, Whoever finds a wife, finds a soul finds a good thing and obtain and obtains favor from the Lord. Glory. We are really honored as we are experience our oneness for the Lord. You know, God is jealous over you, body of Christ. Just like Paul said, I'm jealous over you. I've espoused you to one husband, your true bridegroom, that I might present you a chaste church. What does that mean? It means we're not to have any other lovers, no other idols or false images of ourselves. We need to what? Behold the Lamb. Amen? When we behold the Lamb, we behold light, understanding, and truth, and it reveals the truth about who we are, yes, whose we are, and who we are as the glorious bride of Christ. He sees you beautiful and glorious, hallelujah, without spot, without blemish, hallelujah. God loves you. Isaiah 61, verse 6, verse 10. May you hear this by the Spirit. This is a powerful chapter on restoration. I believe in these times for the church. It starts in verse 7 about for your shame, you're going to know double. God wants to truly give us a double portion of his presence, of his goodness. Why? You're a seed of Abraham. Jehovah blesses. Verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he's clothed me, my soul, with garments of salvation. Glory. You might want to thank him for the finished work of Christ. <laughs> he covered me with the robe of righteousness. Even see yourself now clothed in the white garments of righteousness. Glory. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Glory. You see here a picture? The rejoicing with the bride and the bridegroom. And when the bride, listen, is adorned. She's adorned with jewels. What are the jewels? They're the preciousness of the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the prophetic the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. He wants you to have his nature and his character. The soul realm, her, being anointed with the fresh fire of the Holy Spirit and adorned with the nature of the lover, the bridegroom of your soul. Amen? Hallelujah. Cover me. There's a song, Don't Let Go Till Your Love is all I know, is all I encounter. Yes? Well, Jeremiah 33 verse 11. They uh, love the union that this represents. Don't you love it? Because God is demonstrating to us his love. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Why? He wants a relationship beyond our wildest imaginations. I want to go for the ride, don't you? The full ride to the fullness of His glory in the most holy place where there is glory, there's life, and there is immortality and power. Hallelujah. It's a place of great rejoicing. 
verse um, 11 of Jeremiah 33. This is a message of restoration. That's what those prophets were about. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, most high Sabaoth, for the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. You know, some of you need to get your voice back, your voice, not someone else's voice. You got your own song, your own step, your own lane. God wants to give you your voice back. You know, there's a five-fold, right here, sound voice of grace. The voice of joy, that's the kingdom of God. In Psalms 89, 15, it says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of thy countenance. That's walking in his presence. The second one is the voice of gladness. That is being anointed with the oil of gladness in another dimension of how we think. The voice of the bridegroom. That's the voice of the spirit having preeminence in your heart. The spirit of God. Those who are sons are led by the spirit. The spirit leads in peace. And the voice of the bride. That's the soul her the soul that's the voice of a soul perfected and complete because see the word says you are complete in christ hallelujah and the voice of them this is the fruit or the children that say praise the lord hallelujah truly may we offer to the lamb to god a sacrifice of praise the fruit of our lips continually Praising his name. You know, when you got a praise on, you got more energy. You have more life, more movement. God wants us to be attuned to his frequency, attuned to his fullness. What are we picking up? Are we picking up faith? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. God wants us to walk in another level of faith. Because as we increase in light, all fear is dispelled, all darkness is gone. God says and promises to us, my sheep, hear my voice. They hear my voice and he always leads us into paths of righteousness, into still waters. Hallelujah. God wants a fresh praise coming into the house of the Lord whose house you are and a praise is a union and a harmonious walk in our purpose with the Lord. It's a state of harmony. Hallelujah. It's truly time for a praise to increase because God's going to ca cause praise to spring forth in Jerusalem. He'll make it a praise in the whole earth. That's a people in harmony with the purposes and the plan of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish that scripture. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Listen to this. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. What does this mean? He is bringing a restoration. He is returning or turning everything around back to Christ. Back to to where we lay down in green pastures of life. You might want to thank him for your restoration or thank him that your blessings are on the way. He's provided for you. Yes, he is the lamb. He is the Jehovah Jireh who sees beyond and provides your every need. Good news? Stay with me. Revelation 21 verse 9 through 11 come hither and truly we got to kind of put our ear like John did right on his heart so we hear that beat that rhythm of the heavens come hither I will show you the bride the whose wife the lamb's wife he carried me away in the spirit the book of revelation is a spiritual book to spiritual people with symbols and signs 
And I believe God wants his people to understand what he is saying now to the church. So he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he saw, hallelujah, to a great and high mountain. See, God wants to take us higher and elevated thinking. His thoughts are above, they're beyond. To a high mountain. What's that high mountain in scripture? It's Hebrews 12. You have come to Mount Zion. It's a conspicuous place. It's a place of light. It's a place of his authority. And he showed me a great city. Ring a bell? The holy Jerusalem, a place of peace descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Pay attention. And her light, her light, was like a stone most precious, even like jasper stone, clear as crystal. What is the saying? His light became her light because they were walking in unity. He, unity, in union. He gave the glory so we would be one. Hallelujah. I'm in you and you're in me. Hallelujah. Glorious plans for you and I, body of Christ. And a crystal clear sea is one that is full of truth. There's no mixture. There's no muddiness. There is a clarity. Hallelujah. I did a whole series on the stones, the 12 tribes, a whole message on Jasper. I won't go there, but it's amazing the symbols and the purposes that we see in Scripture. So, back to our, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Verse 3 of that Psalms 19, there's no speech, verse 3, no language there where their voice. The voice is the 12 signs of the zodiac, the stars, the house of the sun. Hello, body of Christ, you house the sun of righteousness that's to arise with healing in his wings. Verse 4, their line is gone out through all the earth. This word line is their inheritance, their direction, their sound, their rule is gone out. What is this saying? God wants us to know and to tap in to the reality of Christ in us. The line, the direction, the inheritance has gone out through all the earth their words to the end of the world in them hello in you the stars he set listen to this a tabernacle for the sun glory which is verse 5 as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race this bridegroom has a bride who is to run with him a race of life hallelujah truly the life of the ages see within you a star he set a tabernacle for the sun to rise to bring healing to display his glory yes you've been called to run a race of life glory hallelujah I pray that gets into your spirit for God is creating a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. We are on a great race track of the heavenlies. You're seated in Christ in heavenly places where everything comes back to him restored. How? The blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. The life of the lamb. We have within us a direction, and it's home. It's glorious. It's re glorious restoration. You know, so many animals have in them an innate sense of where to return. You have within you a track, a path that has been pre-programmed, perfectly designed by the grand designer. Hallelujah. He truly does have a powerful uh, message that we get in our heart, even now. Amen? A union. A union like never before. A marriage of the bride and the groom, the spirit and the soul. You talk about harmony. You talk about a praise. A harmonious praise going on. Hallelujah. So 
continue on with the Maseroth. I've got a few more things to share. Maseroth. In the Hebrew, it's a word found in the book of Job, and the literal meaning is a garland of crowns. Its context is that of astronomical or constellations, meaning it's celestial, it's heaven, and if you look at that picture, the Maseroth that even resembles a crown. Crown, crown, crown. Well, we're to be crowned with life. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. He'll be crowned with life. This crown is speaking of a crown of mentality of life. How do we see? Glory. A wife of noble character is her husband's what? Crown. Jesus is the bridegroom of the church, and the bride is the glory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The woman is the glory of the man. The soul realm is the glory of the spirit. The Maseroth speaks of a garland of crowns. Stay with me. Continuing on, Revelation 12, 1. With that understanding, Maseroth, the constellations, the heavenly signs, the zodiac. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And I pray you see this through the eyes of the Lamb. And there appeared a great wonder. We're in heaven, in the realm of the Spirit. A woman clothed with the sun. Everywhere God is telling us, get clothed in Christ. Put on the armor of light. Awake from your sleep. Why? I want the sun to arise. This woman, this soul realm, was aligned in Christ, clothed in righteousness, spirit filled, putting on Christ, releasing the old man, releasing the uh, former way. This woman found in the heavens is the woman who is the glorious church of Jesus Christ. And what was on her head? What was on her mind or on her mindset or what ruled or governed her? Stars speak or are a symbol of the heavens. So she had on her head 12 stars. It's real simple. She was governed by a fullness of light, a fullness of love. She was governed from a higher dimension. Hello? God wants a people who are not governed from the earth realm because that will get you into fear, discouragement, depression, and obstacles. God wants a people who are governed in a higher dimension with 12, a governmental number, stars, meaning light all around you. What governs you? What rules you? Some are ruled by Hollywood. Some are ruled by politics. Some are ruled by sports. Some are ruled by drama and fear or conflict. God wants a glorious church who is ruled with light, with the Lamb. Oh, this message is all about beholding the Lamb because when you behold the Lamb in truth, in sincerity and truth, you behold yourself without spot, without wrinkle. God wants a fresh faith to infuse our hearts. Hallelujah. So you and I are ruled from another higher dimension here and now. So we see through his eyes. Hallelujah. Because we are children of light. He's the father of light. How much light have you allowed in you? How much grace and truth are you allowing him to give to you or awaken to? David prayed, awake my glory. I will awaken the dawn. We do that as we behold the Lamb, experience the presence of the Lord. Paul said, as you've borne the image of the earthly, we've known a lot about the earthly, but you will bear the image of the heavenly. You were created in the image of Christ, of God. 
I said that wrong. You were created in the image of God, in his image and likeness. Wow, that's heavenly. We need to know who we are. Amen? Revelation 21, 1 to 3. And I saw, see, he's getting revelations by the Spirit. I pray tonight you get revelations by the Spirit. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, no more duality, no more mixture. And I, John, saw the holy city. Hallelujah. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared, prepared, prepared as a bride adorned for what her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, get a revelation. The tabernacle of God is with man. His dwelling place is man. And the bride is adorned. I means she's ordered. She's arrayed. She's received to her glory hallelujah God wants to bring a restoration in your heart in your emotions so you can rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice good news hallelujah God wants a fresh awareness of his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy and he does make all things new hallelujah Revelation 21, 23, a little further in that scripture, in that chapter, and the city. And you know, this just sort of clicked in my heart this week. You know, you are a city set on a hill. You are the light. You are the city. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine. Why? For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. See, as we behold the Lamb, as we behold the light, we get a fresh understanding of His purpose and how it incorporates us as the living church, the glorious church that He is wanting to demonstrate His wisdom to principalities in heavenly places. You know what? His vision of you I, we all might want to pray father increase my vision help me see like you see see he put within you a seed it's incorruptible and he's believing that seed will conquer will overcome and it will bring forth what it came from it was a seed of glory, and he is rising up sons of glory in his image and his, in his likeness. And the city is also what the ecclesia is. The city is a governmental affairs, the ecclesia, the called out ones, out of darkness, into what? Light. The ecclesia is the church, it's the assembly, and it's more like a governmental term that's used it's a summoning of ambassadors for the kingdom of god hallelujah so the church is a heavenly instant heavenly institution on earth now hallelujah and this city had the glory and the glory is the nature of jesus christ it's his character his attributes it's his life manifested through us yes God has called us to glory. He's called us to virtue. That's sort of what we're to possess. P possessing our possessions is the life of Christ that he came to give us. Amen? And the last screen is in Revelation 22. Just wanted to share the lamb the last time here. Then he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and the Lamb. What flows from the throne or the heart is an issuance of the river of the water of life from the Lamb. And this river from the throne, and uh, that it's a kingly river, it's from the throne, it's the same river that flows from your belly. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Glory. 
God wants us to come to a place of clarity, a place of healing, a place of manifesting life and light as we behold the Lamb. Hallelujah. We would really enter in into a fresh union with life and with love and with truth and that we would allow all the falsehoods to drop off of us as we encounter, yes, the resurrected Christ's glory, the Lamb, the light, the river, the water. He is our all in all and He has a plan, hallelujah, and it is glorious and it includes you. So may we truly get on board and allow the Lamb to open up our eyes as we partake of Him. Hallelujah. Especially in this season of a, a new beginning for us in the body of Christ as we really connect anew to the true view of ourselves. As He sees us. Oh, lift our vision higher. Amen. As Ken comes, I pray you were blessed by the word. I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hallelujah. By the spirit of the spirit in this season. We love you. Here's Ken. Thank you, sweetheart. And thank you for that timely message, especially for this season of the year. And we want to thank Sally's mother, Gail, for her beautiful accompaniment on the piano. I've been privileged this week and in the midst of a conference with a pastoral group from Kenya. Many of you have seen Pastor Luke Arwood's name on our website or on our video broadcast site and we're always remarked to the fact that when he's watching these broadcasts at our time, it's in the wee hours of the morning, his time. We are also dealing with that same theme, Behold the Lamb. One of the things that we are looking at is the sense of what the Lamb represents. The Lamb, Passover, actually was initiated as a result of God's relationship with Abraham. It didn't start with Moses. It goes back to God's sworn oath to Abraham to bring his descendants out of darkness that's what Egypt is, out of a land of captivity and to a land of their own possession, that they would become a nation. And that was one of the last statements God made to Abraham regarding that covenant promise, that he would bring them out with great wealth. Well, it's interesting that the lamb being used as a sacrificial element there's something far deeper that we often don't realize. It is the innocence of the lamb that is undefiled. And when we speak of blood, some people often question why so much reference to blood in Christianity? And there are so many different views and concepts and ideas about that. But you know, in the physical sense, blood, we realize, is a source of life flow in the body. But in the book of Leviticus, it also says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Well, the word life comes from the word soul, or the soul of the flesh is in the blood. Soul and blood are connected. Nature is manifest in the blood. We think of DNA. I relate to divine nature activated. In other words, in the physical sense, blood is a substance. In the spiritual sense, blood is light. And that's why it refers to the Lamb in the latter part in the book of the Revelation as the light of the city. One of the things, one of the mysteries, I really believe that has been hidden for these 2,000 years in the church is how we have looked at the Lamb, how we have looked at blood, how we have not understood the significance that deep within our nature there is within our blood that divine nature of the Lamb that is still pure, undefiled, and innocent. That was not lost in separation. That divine nature is within us to be brought to light. And as we return to wholeness, as we are reconciled one to another, 
as humanity or the soul of humanity is brought back into an integrated oneness, that same oneness that was fragmented in Adam is reconciled in Christ Jesus. It's the preservation of innocence that truly is the basis of the gospel. Not the sin of man, not the sin of separation, but in the sense how we were created in the Father as spirit before we were ever conceived in our mother's womb as flesh. When we understand the same sense that when the prodigal son returned to his father and he was relating to his unworthiness and yet the father did not address the son, he did not converse with that son. He simply turned to the servants or to the angels and says, put the best robe on him, shoes on his feet, ring on his finger, kill the fattened calf and let us be merry for this son of mine, he never quit being a son, who was dead or unconscious to his identity, has awakened and come to life. We should be merry. He did not see his son as having been in the world, has been separated. He saw him in the way the Father sees us in spirit. He doesn't see what we think we've become. He doesn't see us, in a sense, in Adam's dream, separated, fragmented humanity. He sees us by his incorruptible word, will, unchangeable. In the perfection, he created us. And that's why we see in the city coming down, the only light that is there is the light of the Lamb, innocence. In other words, God is restoring our awareness of the innocence in which we were created. Nothing can change or alter that. And that's why I've titled in that series, it, The Blood of the Lamb, or Beholding the Lamb, is about the journey back to light. And you see, the power of forgiveness is the power to erase our mind from the darkness of the past. The same way that when God gave Abram the pattern for Passover, he also said this, Speaking of this very month, this shall be a beginning of months and years for you. In other words, your past is being erased. You have been slaves. You have been bound in darkness to a false identity. Or as the word says, we have been bound by the fear of death all of our lives. But you see, death has no claim over us. That's what the blood is about, is that divine nature that is carried. That's why darkness cannot touch that. That's the blood that went behind the veil, in a sense. That's the blood that preserves our purity and our wholeness. That's why that was the blood that would be carried into the veil. Now, literally, the animal for the atonement offering was the bull. But the animal of the Passover lamb is a preservation of unity so that when God looked at the nation of Israel, they were idol worshipers, the Israelites were idol worshipers. They knew very little about God. They didn't have a written law or a system. But nevertheless, when they were brought out, God fulfilled a covenant promise to Abraham. It had nothing to do with they were good people, bad people. It had to do with a promise. And precious ones, that's why grace is so important. God is restoring us according to promise, His unchanging word, His unchanging will, and His unchanging nature. Therefore, the marriage of the Lamb is the soul and spirit coming back into a perfect oneness without the flesh, without the human form. For in God's eyes, we have never departed from that reality in which He created us. So we thank God for this message. We thank God for the Word. We thank God for the light. But that light is an awakening within our being, a coming forth, a rising up of an unchanged person purity that is held within our being. Praise God, we are ascending. The marriage is an ascending of the church up into the headship of Christ, a joining together. We are coming up into the headship of Christ, according to Ephesians 4, that perfect joining together that we will come back with the same pure mind, same pure thought in which we are created. Well, we encourage you to celebrate this wonderful season. Thank God it didn't end at the cross. The cross ended the past. It ended the judgment of the law against humanity. It nailed it to the cross through His blood. 
took all humanity together and on the other side of the veil we ascended together with him now we are in a process of waking up to that truth and waking each other up to that truth awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead christ will shine upon you well rejoice in the light saints of light we are children of light praise god and we just thank god for the word the lamb the light and the restoration of holiness and purity well thank you for joining us thank you for being in partnership with this work we thank those who god has put upon their heart we don't often say much about offerings or support but if this broadcast is a blessing this ministry is a blessing keep in mind that you can partner with us many of you may not realize but in the last six months this ministry has reached over seven hundred thousand people through these broadcasts all across the world and so we realize god is increasing the voice of this message this ministry and thank you for taking on your heart the support and the uplifting of this ministry through prayer and through financial suffering i mean suffering through financial contribution no suffering <laughs> praise god but you can go to our website thegloriousrestoration.com slash donation and you can make a contribution you can make a commitment or you can be a partner on a continual basis as this ministry continues to grow and abound we invite you to participate because the word is going forth and we are hearing from people around the world even now many of them are listening in the wee hours of the morning to this broadcast so join with us in reaching across the waters to those in foreign lands and foreign places that we may be joined together in one covenant of faith one fellowship of light we are truly one in christ let's pray father thank you for the hope that shines within us the hope of restored purity a restored mind set free of the consciousness of sin and darkness and past free of that sense of separation because in your heart we can never be separated because it's in you we live and move and have our being thank you for the preservation of that truth and even as paul would say according to his gospel that mystery that has always been present but only now brought to light he said through my gospel which is christ in you a hope of glory eternal hope of glory in fact we thank you that we're waking up to this beautiful truth we are resurrecting to the realization we are not children of darkness we are children of light we are sons of god through faith in jesus name god bless you have a wonderful holiday season a wonderful time of observing Passover, Easter, whatever term you want to use. But remember, it's the resurrection. That's the power of the overcomer. God bless you, and thank you for joining us.